Hey guys, how's it going? It's Al. It's Friday. It's week 11. I'm going to take a look and take questions actually from everybody that's in my chat right now, right here on Twitch. We're going to talk about building lineups on DraftKings for week 11. Man, the, the weeks just keep flying by. You know what? I'm feeling good about this week. Last week, I really did not like. I did not like the pricing. I did not like the matchups. There was a lot of danger. There were a lot of questions. And that was kind of borne out in the way that the scores turned out on the week. Not just for me, but everybody across the board. Scores were weighed down. The score lines were, were poor. The cash lines were weighed down uh, relative to what they usually have been and what we expect them to be. This week... Looks like we can get there. There's some some value that's out there on the table that looks like it's going to play a good volume of snaps, get a good amount of targets or touches if they're running backs or pass catchers. Uh, there's some premium plays that are standing out from the rest, both in terms of their matchup, their volume, uh, how good a play they are, the expected game environment in terms of scoring for all of those things. It looks like a really fun week, not just to build lineups for cash games, but also to build lineups for tournaments. So uh, I'm... I cannot wait to dig into this week's slate and make my lineups, which is what I tend to do after I start with this uh, this video that we record live. Then I go about making a bunch of my lineups and setting my allocations and doing things. I run through everything. Then I finalize everything tomorrow on Saturday. Uh, and then Sunday morning, uh, I step away from it on Saturday when I'm done. And then Saturday, Sunday morning, I go back to it and I kind of look at everything uh, until after inactives and when I go live with the anti-Tinkercast on Twitch Links to all my socials, including my Twitch channel, down below in the description. Uh, and I work for two or three hours every Sunday morning to kind of finish my lineups, and then I'm done. So this looks like a really fun week, and I can't wait to do it. If you guys are new to the channel, please click that subscribe button, ring the notifications bell. If you're back once again, drop a like on this video. Let's see if we can get 1,000 likes before kickoff on Sunday. I would really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. all the support that you guys have shown throughout football season so far. Uh, and let's just get to the chat. Let's see what you guys have to say, what questions y'all have. Is Elliot a must in cash? No. See, I don't think... And apologies, because I'm a little bit under the weather today. Got a, feels like I've got a, a sickness coming on. Throat hurts. Nose is clogged up. I think there's a few running backs that are really, really standing out from everybody else. I think that Melvin Gordon III, Saquon Barkley, Ezekiel Elliott uh, are the top tier. I think that David Johnson... Uh, Christian McCaffrey are the next tier. I like Kamara behind them. Uh, then there's guys that are a little bit cheaper that we can get into as well. But if you're paying for the top tier guys, uh, that's kind of the way that I like those guys in, uh, in terms of tiers. Could I be talked into Ingram in cash? Um, I don't think he's a terrible play in cash. I prefer Deion Lewis at, at the low price just based on... Uh, the amount of volume he's going to get that should be theoretically higher than Ingram's for essentially the same price. Like, I don't see Ingram getting over 20 touches, and I see Deion Lewis getting over 20 touches. Uh, so for me, I'll take the extra volume. But that doesn't mean that I think Ingram is a bad play this week. I think Ingram is a very good play this week. Um, but if you're asking me to prioritize between those two guys, I prefer Lewis to Ingram. Michael Thomas or Zeke in cash? I think Zeke has the higher floor. I really do. I think Zeke has the higher floor. How do I rank Amari, Corey Davis, and Galladay uh, at 54 to 5,800? Let's take a look. I think they're all very close. Give me two seconds. Um, I mean, T.Y. Hilton's just hanging out here at 6,100. Galladay wants... Once MJJ left the game last week, started piling up targets. I think he got 10 after MJJ left. So he's going to be a very much a focal point of this offense this week, more so than he has been uh, consistently for like the last month. So I think that these days of getting like 7, 9, 9, 10 targets are, are back for Kenny Galladay, which I like a lot. <clears throat> Corey Davis has been getting a ton of volume all year, right? But really has only had two weeks where he's done really, really well, like GPP winning well, right? This week against Philly, and everybody kind of attacks Philly with outside wide receivers, uh, and New England where he was kind of chalky, and I prioritized the wrong guy over him. So that was my mistake last week. Uh, had a big game last week, 6 of 10 against Dallas as well. If he continues to get 10 targets, I think he'll be fine, especially with Mariota returning uh, back to close to what his form used to be. Obviously helps out uh, Corey Davis, but... 
<clears throat> Amari Cooper against Atlanta, who's been so giving. I love the matchup. I love the volume that he's been getting. I think they're all very close. For me, I want the couple extra hundred so I can beef up that one other position. I think you're going to have to punt something this week. If you're going to punt tight end or if you're going to punt one of your wide receivers, I think you have to punt something, uh, not go full stars and scrubs, but you have to punt something to get up to the elite players that I think you kind of have to have two or three of them in your lineup at least uh, to go this week. Wentz or Watson in cash? I prefer Watson, but I understand going with Wentz, assuming that uh, assuming that that's going to be the highest scoring game of the week. So I don't hate Wentz. I just think Watson has a higher upside with rushing, uh, with his rushing ability. I think they're both good plays. In GPP, Zeke plus Cooper, uh, or leverage Zeke with Amari and cross your fingers. I mean, you could definitely go both of them in tournaments because they could beat their salary on volume alone. Lamar Jackson cash lock. Okay, here's here's really the thing. I do want to talk about this. Because I don't know if we're going to know. I really don't. I don't know if we're going to find out. Joe Flacco looks like he is not going to play. Okay, He's listed as doubtful, and a couple of beat writers have speculated that they're like, he's just not going to go. He's he's listed as doubtful, but he's pretty much, you know, like doubtful means what? Like 25% chance he plays? They have not like a 10% chance. And there used to be doubtful, questionable, probable. Probable meant a 75% chance they played. Questionable meant 50, and doubtful meant 25 so they're saying he's on the outside of doubtful. Uh, Lamar Jackson and, and Robert Griffin. Both of them, Griffin's the only one that started every practice this week. Uh, Lamar had an illness, they said, but he practiced today on Friday. If Lamar Jackson starts, I prefer Lamar Jackson to RG3. I don't hate RG3 as a starter. Uh, I just prefer Lamar Jackson's rushing ability to RG3's rushing ability at this point in their career. Um, I am usually not a fan of gamesmanship from coaches because I don't think it gains them very much. But in this situation, Baltimore is saying that they're not going to name a starter and they don't have to. There's no rules that say that they have to. Uh, there's rules that say they have to say who's active and inactive, but they don't have to tell you who's starting at quarterback. So that gamesmanship of saying, well, I'm not going to let you know. Typically speaking, there's no benefit for a defensive coordinator. Like, oh, we might start this guy or we might start this other guy. But in this situation, I think that there is value to that gamesmanship. Now, it sucks for us trying to make that des decision between are we going to start RG3 or are we going to start Lamar Jackson because we can't do it if they don't do it. But in this situation... Gamesmanship actually makes sense. The game plan and what you have to do defensively against Lamar Jackson is vastly different from the game plan and what you're going to have to do against RG3. So now you're putting pressure on the opposing DC in film, in practice, and everything else to have two sets of game plans ready to go and coach your, your players up on what to do in situations um, against two totally different quarterbacks. So them not naming a starter... We're going to have to wait and see who this is going to be. If Lamar Jackson is a starter, I like him. I think he's cash game viable and love him for tournaments. I, if RG3 is a starter, I like him for tournaments. Uh, I'm not going to fade him. I'm definitely going to have an allocation of him. Uh, I think he's fringy in terms of cash. So that's my that's my entire take on that situation. Is it worth it to avoid it all and just go with Deshaun? Yes. If you don't, If we don't know, then Deshaun's a thousand more and good. So I'm fine with Deshaun. I mean, there's a lot of quarterbacks this week that are playable. You know? There just are. Mariota playing way up in pace at Indy in a dome for 5,500. Uh, Fitzpatrick at 5,600. Watson at 5,700. Eli Manning at 5,200 is getting a lot of buzz because of how bad Tampa Bay is. And if we think that Barkley is going to do as well as he's going to do, considering that you know, what, 40% of his touches or 30% of his touches come through the pass game and OBJ is as good as he is and they're bad against tight ends and Ingram's out there that if Eli Manning has three passing touchdowns for 5,200, you're on easy street. Peyton, Peyton Barber, a decent value this week. 71% uh, of the time Tampa Bay passes and 80% of their yards come through the air. So I'm not a big fan of Peyton Barber. I have not really played him that much this year. LaFell and Amari or Roberts and Galladay and Cash? Um, 
I don't know if I want LaFell, but I, I know, I, I get it. I just don't know that there's much there. Like, how much upside do you get with LaFell? With Roberts, at least you get upside. With, with LaFell, what's the upside? You know, I think his floor is fine. You know, I don't think he'll kill you if you play him, but I don't see a 25-point effort ever coming out of Brandon LaFell at, at this point. But I do see the possibility for a 25-point effort. Now, it may be a 5% percent up percent possibility outcome of Seth Roberts coming out with a 25-point game on DraftKings. But LaFell has an even lower... Both of them have a minuscule chance of a 25-point game, but LaFell's is even lower. Uh, even for a 15-point game, I would say that Seth Roberts has much more of a chance of getting that. So I want, if I'm going to punt, I want to punt with a floor, but also uh, the possibility for upside. Humphreys, cash game viable if Godwin sits. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Rank Alshon, Sanders, and T.Y. That's, that's the hard one. Right now, I think I like it in salary order. Alshon, 63. Sanders, 62. T.Y., 61. Uh, that's kind of the order for me right now. I reserve the right to change that by Sunday. Gene Morris, thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. For those of you who are sitting here in chat uh, and not with the ability to chat, because the chat is always locked down to subs only here on Twitch for me uh, when I do these NFL or when I get back to doing NBA shows, you can subscribe using Twitch Prime. It's absolutely free. Just click the subscribe button up above. If you have Amazon Prime, you probably already have a trial uh, sitting right there. If you haven't, type exclamation point Prime in the chat anytime, uh, and it'll give you the instructions on how to link your Amazon to your Twitch account and get a free sub that you can use on me or any other streamer. Just make sure you use it on somebody because it doesn't auto-renew. Is RSJ really a punt? He's in punt territory, yeah. I mean, he's... Salary-wise, he's a punt. You know? Anything under 3K to me at tight end is a punt. So salary-wise, he fits as a punt play. However, he's playing more snaps and running more routes and getting more targets than a punt play should. Same with James O'Shaughnessy. And I think that both of them are my preferred punt play tight ends this year. Or this week, sorry. Dak Amari stack going to be popular, right? I think it will be somewhat popular. Like, I don't think people... I don't think that many people are going to play Dak. But, like, what is high for a quarterback? Like, 20% is high for a quarterback. Because most quarterbacks float between 5 and 15. Because they don't really matter all that much. You know, quarterbacks don't typically win you a GPP. It's the position players that win you a GPP. Bring back kickers and get rid of tight ends? No. Ertz and Cash? If you can fit it, then I'm okay with it. Like, if you want to prioritize... If you don't want to punt tight end, and you rather punt with one of the Raiders wide receivers... And then in, and forego that 6K wide receiver like we've all been talking about and then use Ertz instead. I don't hate that. Any X-Factor changes? X-Factors are Sunday morning. X-Factors come into play after inactives. Friday's too early for an X-Factor. Friday is just stuff. Friday is, is basically like, you know, the Edge podcast. Friday is my Best Buys article, both of which are out already. You know, we just kind of know what we know. And then things can change because somebody all of a sudden gets hurt. Like Melvin Gordon III a few weeks ago when they went to London, all of a sudden wasn't going to play. So Eckler becomes a, you know, becomes a guy. Watkins last week changed things. Thoughts on carry on this week? Um, I like him. I think he's fine. I think he's awkwardly priced for cash. But I think he's fine. An anonymous gifter is gifting a sub. To Stephen Smalls. Well, thank you very much for gifting somebody a sub. That's awfully nice of you. Thank you very much. Stephen Smalls, welcome to the VIP. RG3 starts Bengals defense in cash? No, not for me. Cardinals D in cash. I think they're definitely uh, viable. There's a few defenses out there that I like this week. Season-long flex. Humphreys, Riddick, Doyle, Trey Smith. Uh, probably Riddick. You could go with Doyle as well. Best wide receivers between 45 and 5K. It's kind of a wasteland this week. That that range is not as juicy as it's been in the past. So, like, Deshaun Jackson, I love for tournaments, but I always love him for tournaments. Uh, Demarius Thomas, if you think he's going to get a lot of volume, a lot of service, fine, but I don't know that he's that good anymore. 
Crabtree is going to have subpar quarterbacks throwing it to him. It's not like he's, with all the targets that he's gotten, it's not like he's really lit the, the world on fire this year. You know, if you believe that Cortland Sutton's going to have a big game uh, at some point this year, fine. But, like, he's been priced way up from that 3,000 range with the expectations. So now the value's been taken away from you going to hunt that down. Kiki Kute is, uh, you know, listed as questionable. He's 4,500 as well. Maurice Harris, like, are we really paying 4,500 for, for the things that Maurice Harris can do? I was fine with him at sub 4K. I'm not as fine with him at 4,500. So this range that used to be really you know, uh, attractive is way less so now, especially uh, John Ross was 3,900, now 4,400. Yes, he's going to get a lot of snaps, but facing off against Baltimore is really tough pass defense. Uh, big Surge, thank you very much for the 100 bits, says wide receiver under 4K, uh, Raiders wide receivers. Those are the two best ones, LaFell and Roberts, but not in that order. I prefer Roberts to LaFell. Gazelle with Mike Williams. Uh, yeah, I'm okay with it. But again, don't expect more than four or five targets ever out of uh, out of the gazelle. Sneed cash game viable. Uh, I I need a Baltimore's pass game is good because they throw the ball so much. I still think they throw the ball a ton with RG three. I don't think that they're going to throw the ball a ton if they have Lamar Jackson. We don't know who the starter is going to be right now, so I can't make a call uh, on Baltimore's pass game. Yeah, Mike Mike Williams does not get any volume. Broncos defense too thin for GPPs. Um, it's interesting. I think that they're fine for GPPs. I think they're too thin for cash. I would I would have a problem with them in cash games. Dak or Eli in cash. I would prefer Eli to Dak if it's if the choice is between those two. Would I rather save it running back and go high at wide receiver or high at running back and save it wide receiver this week? I mean, I kind of think that it's it depends on what you what you do, right? Like I think I think you're gonna have one of these guys at least, right? I think you're gonna have one of these guys in your lineup for sure, 100 percent of the time. You could have two of them. You know, you could go this, this, you could come down a little bit and do that, that. I think that the other guy that people are gonna have in lineups is either gonna be Lewis. I think it's going to be a very typical cash game build. It's going to be either Lewis uh, or Ingram, right? So somebody in the low range, some value some value play there. So let's say we go with, and we want Michael Thomas, right? Let's say we want to do that. That leaves us with 4,600. So like a cheapish defense. I didn't even look who it is. I don't care. Uh, mid 5K quarterback, don't care it is. Let's just throw him in there. Uh, that leaves us with 4,800. You're going to have to punt something. So you're going to punt tight end or you're going to punt a wide receiver? Or are you going to really go stars and scrubs and punt both? Which I think kind of gets a little bit dangerous, right? Like you could do it. You could punt Seth Roberts. You could punt with uh, O'Shaughnessy. Leaving you with 6,800. And then, I don't know, David Johnson and a 6,200 wide receiver? Like you could definitely do that. You know, you could get there with two punts and have stud running backs and a stud wide receiver. You won the showdown last night? Congratulations. I think Drew Dinkmeyer also won the showdown last night, Power Bait. So congratulations. You won like what, 4,000, 4,500? What was the payday for that, dude? Jay Conley, 34. Thank you for the Twitch Prime, dude. Appreciate it. Connor in play for cash at a discount. I like him in tournaments, not so much in cash. There's enough... Running back, 4,800, nice haul, man. Like I said, I played those. I didn't get to play it last night. I had my kid at baseball practice. And I didn't post the video, but I should. Check this out. I got to go find it. I posted it on uh, to my family, but I didn't post it publicly. Like, I don't always post stuff. I don't usually post stuff on my kids, like, ever. But, like, check this out. He shocked me. This is my kid at bat. Watch right, this. Jacob, we'll see it. Jesus! Oh He's six, y'all. Six years old. Masher. So I was at that, so I didn't play last night's slate. But congratulations to you, dude. 
just ripping it this year. You see that rope? He just gets up there. Yeah, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Bam! Nice work, kiddo. Yeah, they just finished that stadium. Uh, it's like the T-ball coach pitch at that little league that we that we play in this year. Team Estrogen, thank you very much for the hundred bits. Jacksonville defense in cash, thank you. Mm, I'm probably not going to do that. I get it in tournaments. I don't know if I want to do that in cash. It doesn't. It doesn't really thrill me. At twenty two hundred in tournaments, though, with Road Roethlisberger, I think it's extremely viable. I would probably rather have the Saints against Philly than the Jaguars against Pittsburgh. Um, both at home. Philly giving up a lot of sacks. Doesn't really have a good running game. I think so. I mean, both are risky. Jacksonville and Saints are both risky. So, like, I prefer the Saints to the Jags, but I think the Jags are also good for tournaments if you're looking for a team that allows you to fit in one more stud player. Uh, Jack2, thank you very much. Best for two months. For DFS Little League coming soon. Yeah, my kid's got to be like 9,500, right? What sold me on Aaron Jones? I don't know. Forward Thinking Podcast. MJJ is officially out now? We can go. Remember to ask me that after we record the video, Painless, and we'll talk about everything. <laughs> does McCarthy come back or does Rodgers just stare kill him kind of brutal punt play is the nose picker in right field yikes yeah Marvin Jones out that opens it now we kind of know what's going to happen right so you're going to get more targets from Riddick he ran a bunch of uh, snaps out of the slot last week although he did not get very much work uh, he's a pretty good play for this week uh, that assures Kenny Galladay should get the lion's share of the targets, maybe a 25 to 30% market share of those targets, uh, which is very, very good. 30% is elite in the league to get 30% or more of the targets uh, from your quarterback. Uh, and Carryon Johnson now should theoretically get 20 touches, probably 15 rushes, probably five catches, uh, boosting his value as well. Jordy downgraded out like we thought. So LaFell and Roberts are definitely in play. Galladay versus Amari now a big decision. I don't disagree with that. Uh, thoughts on Aguilar this week? Usually he plays in a slot where New Orleans has struggled. They have, uh, they're, they're, they're bad against wide receiver twos. They have also given up a lot of plays to um, slot receivers. However, the shift when they got Eli Apple kind of changed things because as bad as Eli Apple was on New York, he was even better than what they had there in New Orleans. So it's actually improved their pass defense a little bit. Riddick and Cash now. What's his price? 4,000. She need 12 points. You need six catches for 60 yards. You think you're going to get six catches for 60 yards? Like, that's – I'm not saying it can't happen. I'm asking. CGV, thank you for the 100 bits. Any Peyton Barber, hard for him to not hit value at price. I mean, he's been this price for the last month. He's hit value once. So, I disagree with hard for him to not hit value. You know, he's been this price all season. He's exceeded value twice. He's risky. Tournament only. To me. Thoughts on DFJ versus CMC? Probably playing Cam. Uh, I mean, if you want to partner Cam with CMC, that's fine. But they also kind of fight for rushing touchdowns. That You know, they do have some sort of correlation between the two of them but they also are heads up because both of them are the the goal line backs essentially uh i would prefer to go with dfj and save the money why are we talking about barber because people have asked about him three times so i kind of had to like talk about him if eightman
You mean Mohamed Salah? We're going with Mo Salah this week? I prefer the other guys. Would I prefer Kamara or Thomas uh, running back in Eagles? Uh, if you can get to Thomas, I want Thomas. If you can't, then Kamara comes in at a pretty good value price uh, comparatively. Yeah. If you need the extra 600 and you have a flex left, uh, then I'm okay with it. But I would prioritize Thomas over, over Kamara this week. Riddick and Galladay too much in the same lineup. Not in a tournament, no. I'm fine with that in GPP. I don't want that in cash. How would I rank the guys in the Philly-New Orleans game? Like, like all of them? I mean, I ask me more specific something. I mean, I, I, I like Ertz. I like Thomas. I like Kamara. I'm okay with Jeffrey. Not really okay with Tate. I think that there's too much... Uh, too many issues of whether he whether or not he's going to get a ton of run yet. If he does, great. If he doesn't, I think he's uh, a GPP play. Uh, I like Mark Ingram. I like Lewis more than him, but uh, in terms of one versus the other for essentially the same price, Lewis should have a higher raw projected total uh, and raw projected touches this week. Uh, but Ingram is great for GPP. That's about all that I want. So like those those cats, probably Jeffrey and Tate behind Ingram. Price considered, uh, so do I like Zeke or DFJ for cash? I think they're both cash game viable plays, but one versus the other doesn't always make the, the difference, right? So that thousand can come into play. So if you don't need the extra thousand, I would go with Zeke. If you do need the extra thousand, I would go, you know, play i would not have a problem playing david johnson and then using that extra thousand to upgrade something else where you're in a position where like if you have like 4900 left for a wide receiver and you have ezekiel elliott in there i'm probably going to come down to david johnson because 4900 and down at wide receiver like we talked about earlier is god awful this week so that i could come down to david johnson then pay up for one of those 5k uh, wide receivers who are much much better right? Higher targets, more red zone looks, better game situations. That's how I would look at that matchup. It's never isolated to just the one play. It's isol it, it's it's combined with what else that money can get you when there's a thousand difference between the two. I love Ezekiel Elliott this week, but if I can't get to the wide receivers I want, you bet your butt I'm going to come off of Zeke, come down to DJ and get up to one of those wide receivers that I like better. Keenan Allen, David Johnson versus Galladay and Zeke for DK Cash. I think it's really close. I think it's really, really, really close. If you can get Galladay and Zeke, I'm probably just going to go for Galladay and Zeke. You know? I think number two should theoretically have a higher raw projection right now with MJJ out uh, after all everybody adjusts their projections. Like, I haven't had a chance to do that yet because I was on air when that news came out. So, um... I would say that Galladay plus Zeke should have a higher raw projection than the than the first two. If Gurley isn't on the main slate this week, who comes preloaded? Nobody. I can do anything I want. It's great. Do anything I want this week. If you had to pick one for DK, not like playing Gurley has been bad for me. If you had to pick one for DK Cash, OBJ or Barkley, I'll take Barkley. Powerbait, thank you for the 200. It says Ertz is going to smash. You're only saying that because he's smashed pretty much all the time. Think about it. O'Shaughnessy preload. Okay, I'll leave it to you, chat. What do you got? Who do you like better at tight end? If you're under 3K, do you like O'Shaughnessy? Type 1 for O'Shaughnessy or type 2 for RSJ? Ricky Seals Jones or O'Shaughnessy? Which one do you like? What does the chat say? Chat overwhelmingly likes RSJ better. Trigo5, thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. Two? I think they're very, very close. Give us a solid take on O'Shaughnessy? I mean... 
I gave my take on the edge. Like the take on O'Shaughnessy is, um, it's not a take. <laughs> One, that's that's really the thing is that it's not a take. Tight ends have a very, very, very serious role in this offense, especially in games where uh, Fournette is involved. Bortles, the last two years, uh, two of his top four guys in terms of overall targets and two of his top four guys in terms of red zone market share have been tight ends each of the last two years. He looks to his tight ends a lot, especially since Fournette got here last year. And then you factor in that they play much slower when Fournette is there than when Fournette is not. Uh, means that they're going to run some more play action. They're going to give him the ball to let him touch it 25 times. Uh, which means O'Shaughnessy is going to be open on those little play action, roll out the other way, hit the tight end of the fullback, uh, you know, uh, out rolling to the right on a little QB waggle play. So I think he gets very easy receptions. And at 2,600, what do I need? Seven, eight fantasy points? And if it allows me to open everything else up, that's why I like him. It's kind of the same thing with RSJ. I think RSJ is a better player, a more dynamic athlete who can do more things once he gets the ball in his hands. But like, if you're telling me that I'm going to get four to six targets out of a tight end who's 2,600 in an offense that's going to pepper him and he has a high catch percentage, should catch about 75% of his targets, balls that are thrown his way. Seems like easy value. And if he falls into the end zone, we all party. Pace of game favors O'Shaughnessy. Don't fall for the pace yet because they play a lot slower with um, they play a lot slower when Fournette's in. Ingram play for DK Cash. Uh, I like him for tournaments. Not really. I, Cash seems very straightforward to me this week. Like Cash games this week to me feel like my standard build. Right, sub six K quarterback, two stud running backs. Find one value guy. Uh, play a mid to high wide receiver, you know, under 3,500 for a tight end, find a cheap defense. Like it's very easy to build a cash game, def uh, offense, a cash game lineup this week. Top three, sub six K quarterbacks. And we already went over quarterbacks, Seth Roberts, RSJ, uh, O'Shaughnessy, the highest ceiling lineup of the year. Yeah. Like that's what you're going for. You're punting the, with these super cheap guys who have volume in the passing game. And while I don't think that RSJ is going to get nine targets again, he could, but he, you know, more realistically should get somewhere between like four and four and seven, just like O'Shaughnessy. Texans are mispriced on, on DK, the, the DST one, but like 12. And I mean, that happens every week on both sides. They, they value things differently. There's been a bunch of weeks where, like, my favorite defense on DK has been, like, 3,400, with the ceiling being, like, 4K for defense. Like, that's where they kind of go up to. And then on FD, that same defense was, like, 3,300. It's like, okay, I'll take the free square. Cam gives you pause on going cheap at QB, uh, like usual in cash. Lions are atrocious. I agree. Cam, I wrote him up in Best Buys this week. He's right there. Galladay, Hilton, Davis, Cooper. I have to take a look at Galladay again now. I have to rerun everything on. Uh, I have to rerun everything with with MJJ out, and I don't have the thing on this computer with which to do it. But I have to rerun all my numbers. So I think. I think Galladay would be one, then Cooper, then Hilton, then Davis. But I I don't know for sure. But I think Galladay is one out of that grouping now. I think Hilton's maybe third behind Amari. Does Oakland still get wrecked by 10? I mean, Oakland's getting messed up by everything. Interested in DeAndre Hopkins for GPPs? Yes. I mean, if I like Wack, you know, if I like uh, Deshaun, then I'm fine with with uh, DeAndre Hopkins. Dak, Zeke, Amari, too many Cowboys in cash. Yeah, probably. What numbers do I run? I mean, I kind of, I edit all my target percentages and all my, you know, markets, uh, market share of red zone targets. I change everything. And then I can look at it, but I can't do it when I'm on stream. I can't do it when I'm recording this. Appreciate what you do. Well, I appreciate you being here, man. Thank you for tuning in week after week. DJ Moore looks like an interesting play with Slay covering Funches. Thoughts? Yeah. Big playability just doesn't get a lot of volume. I prefer him for tournaments than cash. 
because of the volume issues. Would you please rank, first of all, Team Estrogen, thank you for another 100 bits. Uh, would you please rank Riddick, D. Lewis, and Collins in cash? Lewis, then Collins, then Riddick. I think Collins sees a, a higher workload this week than he has before with uh, Flacco not under center. Who's getting the flop lag this week? I think Deion Lewis gets the flop lag this week. Do I think the Saints are too thin for cash? No, I think they're all right for cash if, you, if they're what you need to fit everything else. <coughs> <coughs> Jesus. Defense is highly variant. So, like, points don't really matter. Defensive touchdowns, sacks, turnovers matter. MG3 or Zeke, if I can only fit one with Saquon, I mean... Man, I really like Zeke this week. But I think MG3 has is better. You know? I really, really like Zeke this week. I think he has such a high ceiling this week. Connor, cash game viable. I don't think you need him. I think he, if you're paying in the mid-7Ks, I think David Johnson sits well ahead of Connor for cash this week uh, based on opponent, based on game flow, based on usage, based on uh, everything. You know? But I like Connor for tournaments because of the massive, use, the massive usage he gets and uh, his inclusion around the goal line. I just think that the, the Raiders are a dream matchup for somebody like DJ this week. Goff Gurley for all the Rams points. If you're playing Monday night, love that that game's been moved to Los Angeles too. Can't wait for that game. I'm not missing that one. Broncos beat the Chargers this week. Okay. Everybody's getting off their, their takes. I like it. Watson and Panthers or Cam and Saints? Uh, give me the Watson and the Panthers, D. Nuke Galladay or Michael Thomas Aguilar for DK Cash? Nuke Galladay. Is my road running back biased temper for Zeke this week? I mean, running backs on at home or on the road don't matter against Atlanta. Especially if their running backs are involved in the passing game. Atlanta's just going to give up points. Can I take a look at the 6K QBs? Like, what do you want me, what do you want to know about them? I mean, I can look at anything. What like I'll just Drew Brees, if you think he's going to throw four touchdowns, then fine. If you think that they're going to run in a bunch of touchdowns, stay away because he's 6,500. Carson Wentz, playing up in pace, in a dome, uh, has been tremendous so far. If you want to go after it, go after it. I'm fine with him. Uh, Cam Newton, probably going to be the highest owned of all the quarterbacks in this range. Detroit has been terrible. You also get the rushing upside. Matt Ryan's putting up numbers like he did in his MVP year, throwing the ball a ton, throwing for a lot of touchdowns, albeit not necessarily to Julio Jones. Uh, you don't get the rushing upside with him that you do with Wentz or with Newton. Uh, Phillip Rivers is probably my least liked of that group, the top five for this week. Thoughts on Keenan Allen Price versus Chris Harris matchup. How much do they move Allen out of the slot to lose CHJ? Uh, I don't know how much they move him, <clears throat> but I definitely like you know, I definitely like Allen this week because the price is too cheap for the volume. He He's probably going to be less efficient than he normally is, but he should, yeah, he should still get more than seven targets. Any games that have an over-under I think is way off? No, not really. The over-unders have moved a lot this week too. Raw projection, Humphreys or Seth Roberts? I, off the top of my head, I don't know right now. <laughs> mortgage bet on the Chiefs and Rams over 63.5. God, I, I can't wait. That Monday night, that's going to be a crazy single game slate too. Locker Watson, I prefer Watson. Slightly. D. Lewis and Riddick to fit OBJ and Michael Thomas uh, or T.Y. slash Amari to fit Zeke and Saquon. For cash... For tournament, I like both of those lineups. For cash, uh, I prefer the running back volume. You're getting two running backs, one of whom is treated like a wide receiver one, getting 10 targets pretty much week in, week out, and the other one playing the soft, you know, with a career high in targets and receptions, 
the way that they're running the offense this year in Zeke, playing against the softest defense against pass-catching running backs. Already did all the 8K running backs and above. We already went over all those dudes. Like I said, it's a very straightforward week. The questions aren't, you know, how many questions do you guys have at, at you know, when, when everything seems as straightforward as this week is? The matchups are clean. Everything looks great. We got some news early. We'll find out some more stuff on Sunday morning. I'll come back with X-Factors then. But, like, right now, everything seems pretty straightforward. What games am I fading completely? Uh, don't know that I'm going to have much in that Cincinnati Baltimore game. Don't know that I'm going to have much in the Pittsburgh Jacksonville game, but I don't think there's one game on the slate where I'm like, I don't want a player from that game. Houston, Washington. Like I'll, I'll probably have Deshaun. Maybe some, like I won't have anybody on Washington. I don't think, I don't think I'll have one Washington Redskin this week, but like, that might change. Outside, like I might have some Fournette. I probably have some O'Shaughnessy in there. I'll have a little bit of Connor. Like, I'll have something from everything, but I don't know how much. Like, Baltimore, I'll, pro I'll probably have some Collins, but how much, I don't know. I don't, he's not a core play for me, at least not where I sit right now on Friday. Doyle versus Ebron is, is the thing. We talked about this on, uh, on the recap stream, right? Ebron and Doyle. Ebron had the big game last week, priced up to 4,300 now after you know catching his 10th touchdown. Three targets in each of the last two games. Jack Doyle, seven targets, three targets, has outsnapped Ebron over two to one in that time, and has ran more than twice as many routes. It's just this anomaly of a of a thing that happened last week. The statistical anomaly where Eric Ebron catches two touchdowns and runs for another one. And people are going to say, oh, Ebron's the guy. They're going to go to Ebron. Ebron's definitely the guy. I have to play Ebron. And Doyle's definitely the better play if you're going to play either one of those two guys. But I'm not really on either this week. Mike Thomas, a core play in cash this week? Mm. He's somebody I want to play. I don't know that he's somebody that I need to play this week. Thanks, Al. Appreciate your insight every week. Thank you for the two months, man. Appreciate that. Can you define flop lag? You're lost when you see that term. Okay, I used to play online poker. And think about if you get, like, pocket fours. And you play the hand kind of set mining. You're trying to catch a, you know, a four on the flop. And you don't. And you have to fold. And then... So they play the next hand, and a f the flop comes like king 4-4. Four, four. So it's like, you know, the lag is a computer term, a video game term. It means something didn't, it happened later than it was supposed to have it lagged behind. Uh, there was a pause. So flop lag is you had something, and then the next flop, the flop would have just hammered your hand. So like everybody played Deion Lewis last week, and we missed the flop, right? Drew complete air. Drew an air ball on the flop. And then the next flop, come, the next week comes around. And if Deion Lewis has like a 20 point game, flop lag, you know? So it's a poker term that I've applied to, to explain stuff in DFS. Uh, Sonic Librarian, thank you for the 100 bits. Do you take MG3 or leave 400 on the table and go Zeke? It's a tough question, man. Broncos have not been great versus the run. They're not a very good run defense. They blitz a lot to try and cover that up. And Zeke is going to get his, you know, 17 or 18 carries. He's going to get his six or seven targets. He's going to get the lion's share of the red zone work. Favorite really cheap receiver? Seth Roberts. Keep waiting for the Njoku flop lag. It got there. But, like, who knows what they're doing with that offense right now. Somebody said, what's Ebron's market share of targets in the red zone? We can look. But the problem is, it's not 
because it's going to it's going to look a lot better, okay? It's going to look a lot better. He leads the team in targets, right? Over TY Hilton. But like five of those games were when Doyle was out. You kind of have to look at it <clears throat> like he's leading the team in red zone targets, but you have to look at it in terms of what red zone looks, where does he rank in the games that Ebron plays with Doyle? And where does he rank in the games where Ebron played without Doyle? Because if we look at his game logs, the weeks that Doyle was out, Doyle was here for these two weeks and Doyle was here for these two weeks. In the middle of all that, 11, 10, 15, 7, 7. Like he was just getting peppered with targets. Now these targets go to Doyle. Those red zone targets now go to Doyle. And Ebron plays the tight end two role. So it's a different... If you look at his red zone looks in weeks one and two, right? And he did catch a touchdown or two then. And his red zone looks in these weeks versus everything else. So regular season games was week one versus Jacksonville. Yeah. He had one. They all had one. You look at week two. Colts Raiders. He had one. Look at last week. God, the Bengals are bad. He had one. So like compared to like any of those middle weeks, right? Texas versus Colts. When when O'Doyle was out, three. So like his red zone market share and his target share, 12. Changes vastly. So like looking at it over the course of the whole season, it's a lot like that, like I was saying with um with Jacksonville. They're the fat, like right now, if you look at pace in terms of a se seconds between plays, right? The seconds, the amount of seconds it takes for a team to snap the ball. The Jacksonville Jaguars are fourth in the league. They play very fast on the whole. But if you break that down to how they play in games where Leonard Fournette played versus how they played in games where Leonard Fournette didn't play, in games without Leonard Fournette, they are the fastest paced team in the league by a full second. They play quick they get up to the line they run the next play they throw the ball they move again you know in games when Fournette is suited up they're like 22nd in the league in terms of seconds per play they play way slower like five more seconds per play like it goes from like 24 to 29 they play way slower so very different with Fournette there versus Fournette out the Jacksonville Jaguars offense way different Eric Ebron's usage in terms of total market share of targets and red zone market share when O'Doyle is in versus when O'Doyle is out. Any general day trading tips? What do I look for? I don't, no, I, I don't day trade. Chad is Denver D pass funnel uh, or run funnel. They are, they are a bad run defense that blitzes a lot to try to make you do other things. You're the man right now. You're the man right now with the whole wide world. Joey Mo Joey with 15 months. Thanks for giving us great content, Al. Here's to many more laughs along the way. Thank you for the Twitch Prime, man. You realize how hard it is for somebody to put a Twitch Prime sub on your Twitch channel for 15 straight months? I appreciate the continued commitment due to the channel. I appreciate the continued support of the channel. Um, and all of you guys who are always making the, the Discord go. Like, all the little channels on the right are lit up in white because there's always new content in there for me to check out. If I leave the computer for five minutes, there's like 50 missed messages uh, in each channel. It's hard for me to keep up with it. So you guys are the ones that are making this community as great as it is. Are you guys playing Lamar Jack when Roto says MG3 may mix in? We don't know what's going on there yet. So I went over that earlier in the, in the video. But, like, we just don't know. Killing Bird, thank you for the 100 bits. Is Barber a decent value play in tournaments? He is, he is tournament only and a risky tournament only player uh, at that. He's, re he's exceeded value at his sub 4K salary like two or three times this year. I think that that's about going to do it.
like I said, this week looks really straightforward, guys. Right now on Friday, things look pretty simple to put together. So we're going to build all of our lineups, and then I will be back on Sunday morning for the 45 minutes right before lock on Twitch. Link down below in the description. Come and join us over here for the live broadcast. The chat is always locked to subscribers. You're going to have to sub on Twitch if you want to take part in it. Uh, we also have some subs only channels in the Discord. Link down below in the description as well. So you can join into that discussion that goes on all week long. People trying to get better at Daily Fantasy. If you're here and watching this entire video, you are doing just that. I appreciate you putting in the time to make yourself a better player and choosing my channel uh, to be the one that helps you get there. So please drop a like on this video. We're trying to get to 1,000 uh, likes on this video before kickoff this weekend. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications bell. There's the subscribe button. It's right there. Here's some other video for you to check out on my channel. I'll catch you guys later. Bye.